Welcome to Alert and Oriented, conversations about God between friends. Join Gary Barkalow and Sam Williamson as we talk about real life with the real God, really. About five years ago, I came back from a retreat and I, you know, I'm always tired when I come back from retreat. I'm not wiped out, but I'm pretty tired. But I started to get sick. I, I used to have this chronic bronchitis. And so I started to feel my lung. My lungs almost felt like shards of glass were poking through them as I breathe, if I breathe deeply. And then I had a set of unexpected meetings that I had actually wanted to cancel everything. And instead, I had a set of unexpected meetings. And by the end of one day, it was a Thursday night. I was exhausted, exhausted enough that I skipped a board meeting that I was a part of. And they sent an email at the end of the day and we we were going through a mini crisis. We had just lost our president. Um, You know, someone that we we had hired, he had just unexpectedly stopped. We were trying to look for a, a solution. And instead the board spent two hours talking about a totally meaningless, unimportant subject. And I was so frustrated. I sent an email at about 1030 that night after I got sort of the meetings. And I said to you guys, you guys, how could we have done that? Why don't we think first for a change? And then I went to bed. (laughs) The next morning, almost every board member said, Sam, you were not at the board meeting. You don't know what we were talking about. And how could you be so rude? Why don't we think first for a change? And, you know, I don't know if I'm the only one, Gary, but I was just defensive. You know, I didn't start by saying, oh, my goodness, that was wrong. I just started saying, well, I was sick. I was tired. You guys weren't thinking the smart, you know, you weren't thinking of what's most important. And then finally, partway through the morning, I just felt convicted. I sort of went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I am so sorry. I acted like such a jerk. And I felt the Lord. I don't know if this is really God, but the thought flashed through my mind that had a certain sense of weightiness. You know, I said, why did I act like such a jerk? And I, the thought flashed through my head. That was no act. In other words, I was really being a jerk. Anyway, Gary, what is your response to that? Yeah, you know, a lot of the a, a lot of the things that I have words that I've spoken and actions that I've taken that I'm that I'm embarrassed about, I'm ashamed of. The, the you know, I would put the sentence over it. I I know better. Have usually <laughs> happened in those moments, like the one you it just told us about have usually happened when I was fatigued. I was just really tired. I was short tempered. You know, I I had um, very confined vision. You know, I only saw one thing. I didn't see everything. My perspective was off. And, you know, one thing that came to me, this probably came to me a couple of years ago, and I've been trying to be good with this. Remember this is that whenever I come back from something like you were talking about a retreat or something that even if I enjoyed it, it was still to some degree taxing. I've kind of learned to keep my hand over my mouth for 48 hours, you know, (laughs) don't say much, don't make any major decisions, don't come to conclusions, just let it go for 48 hours because I've done that so many times where, you know, I've made a conclusion about somebody or something and then And then I had hours or days of apologizing, explaining, asking for forgiveness. So, oh, that's just so common in my life, you know, Um, and it still is. I I catch myself more often, but I don't. In fact, you know, when we were going to talk about this before I, as we were thinking about this, I thought, you know, I wonder what literally, what the literal definition of fatigue is, because that's what we're talking about, being fatigued. Absolutely. And, and here, here's what's really interesting. So th- they have two parts to this. One is extreme tiredness resulting from mental or physical exertion or illness. The second is, I love this one, weakness in materials, especially metal, caused by repeated variations of stress. Hmm. And, and I really related to the other because part of me said, yeah, there, th- that's when I feel like the metal that I am made of, that God has been, you know, purifying, strengthening, 
it's just gotten weak, you know, over repeated variations of stress. And it feels like I'm at a breaking point. I, I don't know. I just really related to that definition. Well, I, I love that. I mean, I, I do know of metal fatigue. I've heard of that metal fatigue. Or you just think of the old time when you used to take a soda can, you'd bend it back and forth a few times, and then soon you can just rip it in half because you fatigued the metal. Mm -hmm. I think for me, part of what I thought about after my, my very harsh or caustic email, you know, where I don't know if God said I was being a jerk, you know, that's going too far, but I was acting like a, I, was, I was being a jerk. I, there's a certain way I think in me that I have a certain kind of willpower that when I have enough energy, I sort of can put on a veneer of good manners, a veneer of coolness, a, a veneer of civility. But I, I do think it's a veneer. I don't, I, I think that I'm better than I was 30 years ago. Meaning I think that I don't, it's not as much of a veneer. I think that I actually probably don't snap as much when I'm tired. I think I can just be tired. It's fine to be tired. There's nothing wrong with being tired. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a reality of not having slept or exerted too much energy, as you said, or been under stress. But it doesn't mean I have to snap because I think the problem that happens is when I'm under this fatigue, I can't fake it anymore. And, and there's something that comes out that I'm hoping God changes so that I don't have to fake it. That, you know, what's inside behind that veneer actually looks like that veneer. You know, it's, be, it's becoming more purified. Yeah. So in a certain sense, I feel like my fatigue sometimes reveals my true spiritual maturity at that moment. It's not completely true. You know, I'm, I do think that God is changing me. And, and I, re I really do think God is changing me. I think that I used to be a lot harsher. But I also think it isn't always, I, I can't, I, I need to be careful about my self-defensiveness where I say that's not the real me or something like that. Sometimes it is the real me. I'm just not faking it anymore. Yeah. And, and I have noticed, Sam, with you that over the years we've known each other and done many things together and a lot of conversations that you are, <clears throat> that you are quicker to say, you know, I'll, I'll share my thought on this one, but I'm not necessarily in a great place right now. <laughs> I'm not sure my perspective would be good or my filter is right. And I just think that's a good thing to do. You know, I mean, it, I, I laugh about, you know, I keep my, I try to keep my hand over my mouth for four, eight hours, not to say anything, but you know, we, we can't do that in life. And plus people think then we're mad at them, you know, our spouse thing, or they won't talk to me anymore. And they don't realize we're actually protecting them in that moment. But I think to have the honesty of, you know, I, I, I can share what I'm thinking about that, but I'm not sure my thoughts aren't tainted right now at this moment. And, and I think that's just a good disclaimer to put out there. I think it's being self-aware. But as I thought about this conversation, the fact that we just all, interrupt a minute, just a minute, yeah. because you're, you're giving the audience a false impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in a moment of, of not needing a veneer. I want to be honest, but I find use doing that very good. I think I've, if, if I'm growing and it's probably because I've learned from you, you will frequently say, I'm just not in a good place. So bear with me. And I think that is a terrific, I think it's a terrific model. It, it gives, I know what you're saying. And therefore I'm sort of giving you permission, you know, go ahead and vent with me. It's okay with me because I understand that you set some, you know, there's some boundary, you widen the boundaries in a certain sense. Mm -hmm. And what it enables us to do is process together in the midst of fatigue or stress or anxiety or anger or whatever. I think you're saying, I don't know that I'm in a great place. And I think I've learned this from you because I think you've done it longer than I have. I think it's a terrific way to have a conversation. It's a terrific way to process something with somebody else when you're in the middle of that. So I, I want to give some credit where it's due. If I'm growing <laughs> in it, it's because I'm, I've had somebody model it. Yeah, well, thank you. I think, I, I think processing those things is really important, which really gets to what you were saying. And that is, you know, when I'm fatigued and and I say or do or think some things that I know aren't right, um, I, I it's good to wonder. Okay, first of all, what has brought me to this point of fatigue? 
you know, because that could be pointing out something. Why am I fatigued by this? Sometimes we're fatigued by something because we've been doing something for a long period of time that we're not really made to do. That's mm -hmm. fatiguing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, or, or it could be relationships in the midst of a situation, whatever that is. I think asking the question is, why am I fatigued? And then, and then I think the question then could be also is, what has my, as you're saying, what has my state of fatigue surfaced? Or what has it hidden? Because I do think, yeah, I, I find in, in a state of fatigue, which I think we all have, and I think it's just common to this world. Um, I think it will surface things like you said to say, boy, I thought I was more mature than that. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think, and yes, it's a point, it's a point of weakness. On the other hand, I think God says, no, this is good. Let's, let's go after, it. let's think about this. And then on the other hand, you and I've talked about this, right? When I'm fatigued sometimes, and we were just talking about this the last week or two of, I don't feel creative. I don't feel like I want anything. I care about anything. I desire anything. And, and I think that's something to be processed through. Why has this fatigue brought me to the point of I've lost something? Now, I don't think any of it's a loss permanently at all. But what is that about and how did that happen? I just think fatigue can bring up really important things, especially, but I would say almost only if we have someone to process that with. So I, I love your question, what caused me this fatigue? Because I just did a Hearing God retreat in Indiana this last weekend. And I've done the Hearing God retreat. I've done each of the talks so many times that doing the talks isn't brand new. And so I, it's familiar. It's it's material I'm familiar with. I try to put in fresh stories to keep it fresh. And but at the end of at the end of the weekend, I'm tired. I'm just tired. I've been on stage for a long time, given multiple talks. I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations. You know, I'm just tired. But within a few days, I'm okay. But I know the retreat that I did that five years ago before my infamous, why don't we think first for a change? <laughs> It was a retreat that I was doing, and not only did I get tired just from the events of the retreat, but my fatigue was um, supercharged by wanting to, in some senses, do a good job. I, I mean, of course, I always want to do a good job, but you know how there's this internal pressure that says, I better do this really well, I better not screw up. And so there's the normal fatigue of just doing something. You're on stage and you're talking to people, but there's an added pressure that I think I experienced of saying, I was trying to force people to think I was smart or clever or spiritually mature or something. There was this underlying pressure that didn't, that wasn't there this weekend. People were very friendly. I felt like I had something good to offer. I just spoke, but, but I just left it on the table and let the people decide if they liked it or not. I feel like I didn't have that extra added burden. And so sometimes we're fatigued, not just, you know, if you run a marathon, you're going to be fatigued, period. Right. But you can also have this added burden of anxiety, of desire to impress, of uh, maybe your financial need, you know, you need the money. I mean, there, there could be additional factors that are emotional factors that make you even make us even worse. Yeah. I mean, going back to your illustration about it, you know, if you bend tin can enough that you can just rip it in half and it's, it's kind of undue pressure on the metal. The metal was not designed for that. And I, so I, that's what I think about, you know, the, the pressure of I've got to come through, I've got to show yes. them whatever that is, you know, is just pressure we're not supposed to live under. And it does weaken our metal, you know, if you will, to use that expression. I, that's, yeah, that's really good. I, you know, uh, and and the thing is, it can really. I think it can if we'll stop and be self-aware, process, and we have to process with others. I think. You know, we can ask, looking at two situations like you just mentioned, what was the difference between the two? What did I do in the one where I didn't come out as exhausted as I did the other one? And I think that can tell us some things about ourselves. Either. You know, I'm doing something I'm not sure I'm completely made to do or in this way. Mm -hmm. Or in this other one, I actually added this to my experience, my interaction with people, and I loved it. I mean, you know, I've told the story before how I realized that in doing the retreats that we do, if God said to me, 
Gary, you can either speak or you can be in a small group mm -hmm. and facilitate that small group, but you can only do one. I will not permit you to do both. Which one would you do? What would you give up? And I love to speak, but I realize I love the small group interaction. I love listening to people's stories and, and, and probing and then helping connect, you know, the, the, the points of information where they see something and trying to hear God on their behalf for them. I love that. And, and I've realized that when I've done other sorts of events where I had no real interaction, um, my fatigue factor was higher after that. So I, I learned something from that. So I think this is great. I love the idea of saying what caused the fatigue. There are obvious physical things, but then there's an internal pressure. And the internal pressure could be, this is not the right environment for me. I mean, it's not, it's not sinful. It's just saying, this is not the right environment for me. It could be, I'm trying to um, make something happen that isn't, it isn't in my court to make happen. I'm trying to come through in a way that is beyond my ability. I would say in my hearing God conferences, you know, the line I used most often is most people who say they can't hear God think they can't hear God because they're not Mother Teresa. And I would say hearing God that doesn't depend on our goodness. It depends on his mm -hmm. goodness. And, you know, I think that as I'm doing my hearing God retreats, I'm actually trusting in his goodness more. You know, I'm not having to force it. And so actually, I think I come back less fatigued from the retreat because I think I actually am trusting his goodness. I've been saying it for five years. I'm actually thinking I'm doing it now. Um, I think one of the things that happens to me when I behave badly in my fatigue is there's natural fatigue and there's sort of an emotional fatigue. So I was at your house about 18 months ago. We were doing a calling retreat at your church. I think it was at your church. Mm -hmm. And I was going to preach at your church the next day. And I was tired because this retreat had gone on. You and I had both spoken. We'd led small groups. I don't know if you remember this, but because I'm still on East Coast, even when I'm at your house, I get up and I made coffee and I sat there and I drank it. And then when I went back to fill up my cup, I realized when I had made the coffee, I hadn't put any coffee grounds in the filter. <laughs> and so I had just drunk a whole pot, glass of hot water, but it was in a tumbler with a top on it. That was just hot water. It wasn't coffee. I thought I was drinking coffee. So I think in that case, there was such fatigue going on inside me. Even my physical sensations were yeah. at a loss. That's just, there's nothing, that's just natural fatigue. But I think the time that I snapped at those people in the board, I think I was feeling self-pity. And self-pity, I think, almost always makes me short-tempered with other people. I was thinking, don't you realize I just had done this retreat? Don't you realize I've got bronchitis? Don't you realize I just had all these meetings with other people? And I'm just feeling sorry for myself, which makes which takes my attention away from God or other people and just puts it on me. I think that I was feeling sorry for myself. And I think that is really the root of what made me be so harsh with people. Yeah. Which again, is a kind of processing what's really going on here. Right. That wasn't the cause of it, but that was the result of it. Yeah. You know, and Sam, I, I want to throw out this idea. You and I have both given examples because we've been doing this together for years of, you know, fatigue that can be a result of doing a retreat, a conference. Mm -hmm. And, and, and most people don't do retreats and conferences. So I, I, I do want to say, you know, as we talk about this, I, there's a, I, I think, at least I experienced in my life, there is a general level of tiredness that I feel all the time. And then there's fatigue, as it was defined. It's extreme tiredness, you know, extreme weakness because of events or illness. So first of all, I do think there's, we all experience it, a, a general level of tiredness. And I, you know, we've talked about this. There's, you know, there's just the, the, the tiredness that comes through the struggles with family, you know, the things that we hope for, we're not seeing yet the, the conflicts that we have to go through the things we have to resolve the hopes and fears. And it goes on and on. I mean, that that's tiring and everyone experiences unless they've shut down their heart on all of it. And then you, then we have, I think, especially in the last couple of years, the cultural stresses that we see, whether it's, you know, the pandemic, 
Um, what's it going to do to me? What's it going to do to people I love? Um, what's an extreme view of it? And what's an accurate view? What should I do about this? And, and, and then there's just the things that we're seeing in our culture lately that we're thinking, I can't believe we are here as a culture. I can't believe that the culture is talking about this approvingly when before we didn't, we wouldn't even talk about this. This wasn't something to talk about. And then it got to, well, maybe we should talk about it and debate it. So, I mean, there's all these pressures that we feel that I think can, you know, that, that lends to a level of tiredness, but moves to a level, level of exhaustion. And then we find ourselves saying and doing things that we didn't think we would anymore. And that brings in a level of stress and exhaustion by itself. So, so I, I, this is great, Gary. So let me see if I can summarize what I think you said. You know, you and I do retreats, but most of our listeners are not doing retreats, but they do have projects at work. They have projects at home. They're putting on an addition. They're redoing their kitchen. They're doing stuff. That kind of project can be fatiguing, just like we have our retreats. Mm -hmm. There's also this whole pandemic where there's a kind of cultural fatigue of constantly having to think, do I wear a mask? You know, am I involved in this vax or anti-vax debate? You know, there's, there's sort of this pressure and that is a fatigue. That's sort of a, mm -hmm. that's a drum, you know, a bass drum note that's thumping and thumping in the background for the last, you know, 20 months. We've just been feeling it, and that is fatiguing. And then, as you're saying, there's a there's there's sort of a whole shift in the way the whole culture is thinking. You have a phrase, and I don't remember it exactly what it is, but it's things that used to be unquestionable. Now, what's what's the right phrase? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Things that were used to be unthinkable right. are now are unquestionable. I think that's yes, the phrase. That's the phrase. Yeah. So things 20 years ago that none of us would ever talk about, none of us ever believed were right. Now, if you say it's wrong, you are a supremacist, you're a racist, you're a Nazi. And, and this kind of shock is fatiguing. It's fatiguing to the Christian who's saying, I don't even know what to do in this world. And that's, it's, it's a whole new level because it's everywhere. We have to guard our mouths. We have to guard our tongues. We have to guard what we write. We don't know where we're going to be attacked. And you're right. That is spiritually very fatiguing. Yeah. And, you know, um, it, it's when I was, I thought, you know, I had to just look up what fatigue literally means as it's defined by a dictionary. But then it, it led me into some other things. And I ran across a, um, a symptom, I guess you might call it. And it's called combat stress reaction, CSR. It's It's not... It's not, um, um, oh, what is that called? Uh, fatigue um, that we talk about all the time. Post-traumatic syndrome. PTSD. Yeah, it's not quite that. It's something actually more general before that. But, but this is how it's defined, this combat stress reaction. It says this most common symptoms are fatigue, slower reaction times, indecision, disconnection from one's surroundings, and il inability to prioritize. And I thought, boy, when I feel fatigued, I, I feel those things, you know, I, I, it's my reaction time is slower. Now, sometimes it's not <laughs> with the things I shouldn't be saying or doing. No, but, your reaction time is <laughs> probably your processing is slower, but you might still react fast. That's true. <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> that's what happened with me. My processing yeah. was slow, but my reaction was fast. Yeah. Why didn't and, I think first for a change? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and I can feel very indecisive. Like, I just can't make a decision. I, and, and sometimes it's good not to in this state. But I, it, it felt very similar to how I feel fatigued. And then I started thinking, okay, they call, they talk about this in terms of combat, obviously. You know, and they're talking about literal combat. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to make our life out to be combat when, when this, you know, it isn't in a sense, not according to what they're talking to, but I thought, okay, so in non-warfare terms, literal warfare, what might that be called? What would be the language for that? And I thought, you might call that loss of heart. You know, we, we get to that point where we're so fatigued that we've just kind of lost heart at that point. And I'm, right. and I'm talking about the, you know, as we see it defined in scripture, we just 
we just lost heart um, about our own life, about our progress, our growing, the interaction and the love of God in our life, you know, trusting other people. We've just lost heart. Um, and, and I thought, yeah, that's scripture warns us about that. Be very careful not to lose heart, not to stay in that state, you know. I, I think that's a great definition. This is sort of the norm. We're, we're not literally shooting M16s and that kind of stuff, but we're we're still under in a battle. And so I think this underscores the, I think the hugely important spiritual gift of encouragement, you know, people who have lost heart and we're all losing heart, you know, everybody we're running into in a certain sense has lost heart in some ways, in some area of their life. They may not have been all areas, but, but in some area they have. And I don't know that we as a culture value just encouragement, give, you know, literally giving somebody heart giving them heart again, giving them strength, giving them courage, giving them hope in the middle of all this. I, I certainly know that when I'm in fatigue, what I probably need most is encouragement from somebody, a reality check, see things yeah. as they really are. Instead of through my, the opposite of rose colored glasses, you know, but the bad colored glasses. Right. Yeah, I think Sam, as you say that, and I'm trying to think, okay, so where do we go with this? I think where I land in this conversation as we're processing this together is one, we, we really need a close friend or friends who we can process things through in, in our times of fatigue, because just holding it in and hoping it goes away, it, it, that's, not, that's not helpful. Um, anyway, but I think processing it with somebody. And then secondly, I think it's having somebody to encourage us, right? To give us courage once again in our walk with God and, and in this difficult world that we live in. And, and so what comes to mind as you say that is, you know, Jesus is kind of standing, I call it a standing invitation where he says, you know, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. And I think, I mean, I felt before, like my metaphor was that felt like a hall pass I was given once. Like, I'll give this to you this time, come to me and I'll give you rest. But next time it's off to the principal's office and you probably get detention and you may be, you may be kicked out of school, you know? And I could definitely think that in my, in my fatigued moments, but I just think, you know, that, that invitation of Jesus of come here, rest, just rest for a while. You know, we started, I would say, 10 or 12 episodes ago, we, we did a few just on nurturing the life of God in us. Mm. And, you know, of all the people who ever had a really bad day, um, you know, and I don't, I'm sort of saying this tongue in cheek, but I'm, I don't mean it. Jesus had the worst day of all. all. You know, he's, mm. he's in, um, he's lynched, in essence, in a jury rigged kangaroo court. And he didn't, he wasn't hiding behind a veneer. You know, he's literally on the cross at the very end of any human strength. His spirit is literally ebbing away. And he says, father, forgive them. This was not my attitude when I had bronchitis for one day and I had a couple bad meetings. I was not, I was not forgiving them, much less asking the father to forgive them. But I do think the promise of God, part of the promise of the very thing you're talking about is his life in us is growing to the point where what we want to be seen on the outside actually becomes what we are on the inside, his life growing in us. So that even in the midst of the greatest fatigue, literally moments of giving up our ghost, we can say, father, forgive them. I mean, I do think that's the hope that we have on this side of heaven that we can grow into being that kind of person, even in the midst of fatigue. Yeah. Sam, this is fun kind of processing We've never really, we, we've processed our fatiguing, fatigued moments, but we've never kind of processed this idea of, you know, living through fatigue and knowing it's going to come again. And what do we do with that? This has been really good um, to do this. And I, and again, I, you know, we wanted to talk about this because we, we, we know everyone encounters this. This is not a new thing. It's not just for us. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It's not just for us. It sounds like that's a gift. <laughs> we, we all encounter it, but 
I don't know that I've ever talked to someone else about this idea of fatigue and how do we handle it and how do I help you handle it? How do you help me handle it? I, this has been fun to do. It has been. I look forward to doing this again with you and I'll see you in a week. Thanks for listening. Please join us by following this podcast or liking it and visit our websites, thenobleheart.com and beliefsoftheheart.com for more resources in living the eternal life with God today. You'll find articles, videos, and online classes. See you next week.